Um, so uh, first off, I just wanted to say what an honor it is to come speak in front of everyone here today. Um, I was in Lloyd Warner's class, was my first appraisal class, and my, my old mentor is in the audience, and uh, my whole crew is here, so it's, it's, great to, it's great to come speak, and it's an honor. Um, so I'm a certified residential appraiser, so you're going to hear things from a residential standpoint. Today I have, a, uh, I have an appraisal blog, and um, I've been a mobile appraiser since uh, about 2010. I switched over, I decided you know, no more sitting in the office with a computer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my computer out in the field and, and uh, move into the 21st century. So I have a small shop with three appraisers, and they're sitting over here. It's myself, Anthony, and uh, James Anderson are, are my certified appraisers, and uh, my assistant is Luke, and he's also over there, and my wife, Lindsay, is over there. So, uh, and my, my office, I, I like to think that we're kind of known for doing things a little bit differently. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that we do differently, or at least I do in my office, is I work from a treadmill desk. And uh, it's a great way to stay focused and stay healthy while you work. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really here to talk about mobile appraising, but another way that I'm different. But if you guys are interested, it really is. You don't need that coffee pickup in the afternoon. You're standing there working at your desk all day long, and you don't you feel like you're having a walking meeting with yourself all day. And you don't get that mull at three o'clock going, oh God, you slunched in your seat. It is it has changed my life. So fantastic. If anybody wants to hear about that more, we can talk about it later. Um, so I got rid of my clipboard and uh, started mobile appraising about four years ago, and I want to help you learn from my experiences of going through the transition. Um, so whenever I come to appraiser meetings like this, I, I leave the gathering, and appraisers are mobbing me at the end, going, what about your computer? I saw you sitting there with your computer, and do you use that on inspections? They start asking me all kinds of questions, so I thought it'd be a good, uh, a good topic to talk about. Uh, so I'm going to give you a, uh, a three-step process to get you, if you want to go mobile and, and, and no longer be tied to that computer in the office and be productive anywhere, um, you know, I'll give you a three-step process to help you get there. And uh, you can't talk about mobile appraising if you don't talk about distos, so you know, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of my experience with the disto at the end as well. But I don't think you have to be using laser measuring devices to be a mobile appraiser. So, uh, so why go mobile? And <laughs> the reason is, is we're, we're being squeezed. Our, as an industry, we are being squeezed. I, everyone here can relate that you know, we're constantly being asked to do more, do more. And, um, and who wants to give us, who, who's going to let us raise our prices and pay for that more? We're always asked to do more. There's more cost of business, and our fees haven't kept up with inflation. So the only thing we have left is to try to save time anywhere we can to try to stay competitive. And mobile appraising, I think, can help. It's it's one piece of the puzzle, but it can help you. Um, it can help you save the time that you need to stay competitive in this market. And so I I I have a system that works, um, and. I know a lot of people. A, a lot of people have excuses for not using a tablet computer in the field or being a mobile appraiser. And, you know, my way works, or the, the costly gadget is out of date by the time it arrives at your house, and you, know, and you spend all this money, and now there's the new, newer, latest, greatest thing. I've been using the same computer for four years. And, um, Works great. You don't have to. You don't have to be on the cutting edge with a brand new computer every six months to be a mobile appraiser. And um, you know, some people say the clipboard and tape are more reliable. And you know, my computer has failed me on inspections before. Uh, I keep a clipboard in the car and a piece of paper if I need it. And, but you know what? I don't. I don't remember the last time I had to use it. I did use it. I have used it, but I can't remember how long ago. It's, it's a pretty rare occasion. Um, so. I think this is a, a fitting quote. 
Uh, time is really the only capital that any human being has and the only one thing you can't afford to lose. And your time is more valuable than, than any, of the, any of the gadgets I'm going to show you today. It's far more valuable. And if you don't know how valuable your time is, you should, I suggest you figure it out. Uh, I keep a spreadsheet of, that I track all of my jobs and every job, how long I spend on them, all of my expenses. And at the end of every job or at the end of the year or the month, I can tell you exactly how much I make per hour. And I won't say that because my wife's in the audience today. Uh, but but uh, you know, I know that for most appraisers, if you can save 15 minutes off of every job, you can, you, that's hundreds of dollars per month. Uh, and that doesn't seem like much, but I can save you with mobile technology. I think you can save more than 15 minutes off the job. I think you can save 30, 45 minutes easy. Uh, so technology is, is uh, one of many solutions to appraisers being squeezed by all these pressures that we have in order to compete. So we have to streamline our processes and increase our accuracy and increase our professional image. And these are all things that being a mobile appraiser can do for us, and we'll talk more about later. Uh, and this is one more fitting quote, and I won't give you any more. Uh, you will never change your life until you change something you do daily. I changed working on a treadmill. That was, you know, I changed that. I, something I did daily, I didn't change my life. I do it every day. I stay out of the treadmill rather than sitting at a desk. Well, same thing with, with mobile appraising. You, you decide to make that transition, take a computer with you out in the field, and, and, uh, and it will, I think, change your life. But you have to commit to it, and you have to, you know, it won't, it won't work perfect the first time. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process to help, you, to help you get there, but, you know, it's going to take a little bit of work. Uh, so, the first step in the process um, is, is multiple monitors. And I think probably a lot of you have already, are already familiar with multiple monitors. Can I get a show of hands? How many people use multiple monitors? Almost, almost everybody. How many people use more than two monitors when they work? Only a couple. Okay. Well, most people know that like on a laptop or on most personal computers, there's a port in, that, in the back of the computer where you can plug in an extra monitor really easily. And everyone here that has switched to multiple monitors knows that once they get that second monitor, boy, things change. The world changes. Now you can have one window open with a PDF or something that you're working off of, and, and you can have another window on your computer open with your report or, or whatever. And, and when you go, you can go from two monitors to three monitors really easily, and most people don't realize that. Uh, they have these little pluggable adapters available online. I use what's called a pluggable, and they plug into any USB port, and you can get up to six monitors using your USB ports on most computers, and you don't need a special graphics card or anything. Um, and most people, I think, probably don't know that. Um, so uh, let's and. And multiple monitors is 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 a key step to getting to being um, to being a mobile appraiser because it's going to allow us to be paperless. Uh, are are those plugins available like a Best Buy? Um, yeah, you can get them at Best Buy. Amazon. I did a search on Amazon before doing when I was getting ready for this presentation, and there was uh, when I put in USB. Um, USB monitor adapter, I think, is something I put in Amazon, and there was page after page of them, and most of them started around $35. One that I used was cost $35. So, um, moving on to paperless. So, I want everyone to do another show of hands here. Put your hands up if you use paper to make your appraisal report. If you use any paper at all. My hands up, I use paper. <laughs> so keep your hands up if you use less than 20 sheets of paper. Keep your hands up if you use less than 10 sheets of paper. Keep your hands up if you use less than 5. My hand's still up. I use less than 5. I use 2 pieces of paper. Um, now, I don't think, I, I don't know, was anybody in this room 
paperless completely, doesn't use any paper at all? Because I'm not. I, I, I think going paperless doesn't mean necessarily that you have to 100% eliminate paper. But I think you should be close. And you can't really be mobile if you've got to pack around a bunch of paper with you everywhere you go, or if, you're, if you want to collaborate with other appraisers. Um, it's, just, it's just not feasible. And so you know, we, we do the multiple monitors. That's step one. Step two, uh, now we need to be paperless. So to get to, being, to get to being as close to zero paper as we can, um, we, we, we need to quit the paper addiction. Quit the addiction to print. Uh, so do you want to buy your next $100 toner cartridge or your next $45 box of paper? Uh, I haven't bought a toner cartridge or a box of paper in years. I can't even remember. My toner lasts forever now. I, I think since I went mobile, I have not bought any toner cartridge or paper. It's still the same box as before. So, um, And do you want to get rid of all those file cabinets? That you have, I'm sure you've got file cabinets sitting around your office, or I had boxes of paper filling up in my crawl space of my house, and, and every year I would load up all these drawers of folders out of my office, and I would categorize them on the paper, and I'd crawl under the house and stick them under there, and boy, that is that is a, a big pain. So, um, and, and so. Once you once you break the addiction to print on paper, uh, you know it allows you then it opens up a whole new world. It allows you to be mobile, but it also allows you to uh, collaborate with with other appraisers instantly. If you want another appraiser to look at your work file or something, you can instantly transfer that to the other appraiser. And in my office, we we collaborate on everything, and we're constantly moving these work files through the through the process and among everyone in the office. So, um, so the first thing you need is to, to cut that addiction is you need a PDF printer. And uh, you probably already have one. When you, when you get your appraisal software, there's probably a PDF generator in there, and there's probably a PDF printer already on your computer. But if you don't have one, they're, they're available for free. Uh, but you just have to select it in your print options, and then make it your default so that you're not hooked to need to print something out onto paper. Um, another, another thing that's going to help you beyond the PDF printer is to get a mobile fax number. Get rid of the fax machine. How many people here have a fax machine and have received something, have received a fax, then they take that fax and scan it and put it into their report. I've done it. I used to do it all the time. And what do you end up with? You end up with a copy of a copy, and it looks horrible in the report. And, but if you have an online fax, like I use SmartFax, runs $6.95 a month. Um, somebody sends me a fax, which I, it's not all that often these days, but I still get them on occasion. Somebody sends me a fax, it just goes to my online fax, and a PDF pops up in my email that I can then put in my work file on my report, my digital work file, or I can upload it into the report. I can do whatever with it. So um, let's move on to the next. So the next, uh, the next slide that I have is showing how to get an RMLS combined report. And so now that we're printing on PDF, I think having a the combined report, and it was Jim in my office that really taught me this and opened my eyes to this, but it's it's so obvious, I'm amazed I didn't know how to do it. But it, it has allowed us to get rid of paper. So once you've, once you've selected your comps, and I'm going to start this manually because, so once you've selected your comparables, you can see here on the screen, um, I didn't want to do this live on the RMLS because you never know what can happen if you're trying to go on the RMLS, but you select specific order. On, on your list. Now you can select each one of your comps in the order that you want. I usually select my subject first and then each of my comparable sales based on their sales date, or not sales date, their sales price. And then I do my pendings or actives last. And then go up and select combined report up there. And hit go. And uh, <coughs> so 
So now, now it's going to generate our combined report. I've got the agent full, the 16 up photos, uh, everything that I want to have in my work file for each one of those comps is now in that combined report. So let me click to the next slide. I'll manually start this video as well. So now that now that we have now that we have um, a, our combined report, or we have gotten rid of the addiction to print on paper, we have all these PDFs. What do we do with them? Because I know everyone here has the, and I used to as well, you have this want to have a piece of paper sitting on your desk because you need to do things with it. You need to make notes or highlight things or, or whatever. So the next key is you need to have a PDF <coughs> annotator type software. That's exactly what we, I use in the office is PDF annotator, but there are other programs. So you can see here, this is like a printout of my search results. And this is my combined report. Um, I've been making notes on, on all of these. And uh, I didn't want to try to do this live because I didn't know how it was going to turn out. But you can see, OK, we called the agent and we interviewed them. I can type those notes right in. Uh, if you have a screen that's penable, you can actually draw on the screen with a pen. But you can do this all with a mouse. Say your management company sends you paperwork for direct deposit or something they want you to fill out. You can fill that out all on the screen. You don't need to print it sign it and send it. You can have your signature store. Do whatever you want with a PDF. Uh, how many people are using something, a software like PDF annotator or similar in here? So most people or maybe, a, that looks like maybe half, half the river one. So it, if, you, if you don't use a PDF annotator type software, uh, I don't think you can be, really be paperless because you're always going to want to have that to make notes and, and uh, and it takes a little getting used to, but in the end, it's it's really faster to make notes on this um, than on an actual piece of paper. And the notes look great. I can erase them. I can move them around, do whatever I want. So use a pen or your pen. Um, I actually, when I'm sitting at when I'm when I'm at in the office, my computer is docked, and so I'm just like a desktop computer. I pull out I pull out a uh, keyboard, and I have a mouse. And I use my mouse to draw a line and circle something or highlight. And then um, you can see, let me use the little laser pointer on here. You can see up here, there's, you can select a pen or you can select a, this is a, a type button. So I just selected that and I type. So then this just, I type it right on to, you know, type my notes right onto it. There it is, typing into a box. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers it. And then when I'm in the field, if I'm pulling comps in the field, which I do on occasion, I have to go back and pull comps, I print them to PDF right there in the field, and I'm making notes with my pen on my screen of my computer. So uh, it works quite well for me. Um, so let me get back to moving on. So now that we've got everything on PDF and now we broke, we started to break that addiction to print on paper, now we got to do something with it. What do we do with all these files? Um, so we have to, we have to back them up online. Um, so USPAP says our, our records must be stored in a medium that is retrievable by, by the appraiser throughout the prescribed record retention period. So Online is just fine. Um, you can do that. Um, I use I use all mode, and they have you can actually attach files to the report, like I'm showing here. This will loop back around, but you can actually attach files. There's the files in the report. You can attach them, and then you can upload them to the vault. And that, I do that. And your software, if you use I, Bradford, I know has something similar. I don't know about ACI. But uh, whatever software program that you use, it's probably an online storage. And if there's not, you don't have to subscribe to an online storage. You can actually use like a plug-in. You can use an external USB drive. You can use your computer as long as you don't delete those files. But I suggest you back them up somehow, uh, in some way at least, so they're as well protected as a box would be in your in your uh, crawl space under your house. Um, <laughs> I also use, when I, when I back up online, I also have a service called Carbonite. I don't know if anybody uses that, but uh, Carbonite backs up everything that's stored on your computer all the time. And it also does it for your cell phone or your tablet. 
and uh, it's a service that costs $59.99 annually. And everything that you put on, so if I start working on something on my computer right now, it immediately starts backing it up online. If my computer gets crunched, driven over by a truck or whatever, I can walk to another computer, go online, log into my Carbonite account, and there's my desktop. Everything that's on my computer is right there on Carbonite. Uh, and you know that's I do that because you know I take the risk of taking my entire live computer with me out in the field when I go out. So um, I, Carbonite is just kind of a backup, but it's not it's not like a use path compliant type backup because if I delete it off my computer accidentally, it's gets deleted off Carbonite after a couple of weeks or so. So you, you got to be careful. But um, so file sharing. Um, now that we're paperless, we can also share files really easily. And I do that using uh, Google Drive and Dropbox. I don't know if anybody's familiar with those, but basically Google Drive and Dropbox allow me to actually have a folder on the desktop of my computer, just like any other folder that I put. I can store it anywhere on my computer, and I can, I can right-click on those folders and click share, select share, and share it with somebody else in my office. So if I put something, like Jim has a bunch of assignments in a Dropbox folder, if we get a new order, I can just slide it over and drop it into that Dropbox folder, and it's immediately, as soon as, as, soon as Dropbox updates, within minutes, it's updated on his computer. That same file is in that folder. So by being paperless, I have now instantly transferred files to Jim. I don't even have to do anything. He can now, anytime he goes to that folder on his computer, it's there. Um, another, another way that we share files in my office is using Skype. I don't know if anybody here has ever used Skype to transfer files, but it is really slick. Uh, it's so much better than emails. Uh, everyone thinks of Skype as, as like a video chat. And it does that, but we don't. We don't do video chat. We transfer files on Skype through the little chat window. And all you've got to do, if you want to send a, send a file to somebody who's also on Skype, you go and uh, find that file on your computer and click send, and it'll chirp on their computer on their end and say, "Hey, you've got a file waiting for you." And they download it, put it wherever they want. And the benefit of that is you don't have a file coming into your email that then they have to, they have an email, then they have to delete that email, put the file somewhere, you know, they have a lot of process, things that clicks and things that have to happen to email a file, whereas Skype, I know it instantly, the instant he downloads it, it says, boom, he downloaded it. I, he, he got it, he doesn't have to say anything to me, but if I, if I were to send that file in an email, I'd be, ah, oh, did you get that? He'd have to send me a response of some sort. So, um, being paperless, gets us to these new levels of being able to do things that we never could before with paper. You know, when, when uh, before I was paperless and Jim was my assistant, he would get in his car and drive the work file over to me when he was done with his portion of the appraisal. So then I could take it across the finish line. I'd have to take that work file and go through everything. And, uh, now, now we don't have to do that. It's instantly transferred to me through either Dropbox or Skype or some other method. So, so there's there's some myths. So step three is is taking a computer out in the field and using that mobile device. You've made it through step one and step two. So there's step three, uh, there's. Uh, how many how many people here first of all use a computer in the field to take notes? Just one person? All right, Jim. What was you, the question? Do you, you use a computer in the field on your appraisal inspection? <laughs> you, use a, you use an iPad. Well, I use an iPad, but uh, that's a computer. Put your hand up. Well, okay. we'll, we'll talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some big myths going on about using a computer in the field. And I think the number one myth is that they don't save you any time on the inspection. Well, it, it's really not a myth. That's true. It doesn't save you any time on the inspection. I, I take just as long on an inspection with my mobile computer as I would with a clipboard and tape measure and drawing. And you know what? That's OK. I actually encourage you to spend lots of time on your appraisal inspection. It does not look good to a homeowner if 
you're the fastest guy in the world. You know, if they have a problem with the appraisal at the end, they're gonna, the first thing they're going to say is, that guy was out here only 15 minutes. He didn't hardly look at anything. And you don't want that. I take my time and I, you know, I, but in drawing, drawing the sketch on the screen of the computer isn't necessarily faster. I'm pretty good at it, but it's about the same speed as a sketch. But really, the time savings is, is happens not when you're at the property. It happens when you get back to the office. There's no typing in your notes. How long do you spend drawing the sketch into your computer when you get back to the office? How long do you spend retyping all those notes that you took and you're putting them into the form? It takes a long time. I, I probably spent in the past when I used to do it that way, 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Um, and, and how many times have you been redrawing your sketch when you get back to the office and the two ends don't meet and you're like, oh no, what do I do? So, okay, you have one option. I can get the sketch from the county and figure out where they're different and maybe I, I just <coughs> made some error. Worst of all, I could, I could call the borrower or the homeowner if it's not a lending type of appraisal, but call them up and I could go back out there, but boy, that's embarrassing. Um, and how much time is, how much time does that take? And how much time, how much is your time worth? So uh, also with the computer, you've saved time because you're not gonna forget fields. There are almost every appraisal mobile software that's out there has required fields that you can set up that you have to fill before you leave the property. So if you're set up required fields and you're following that, you're not going to forget something because it's there. You have to fill it in. Um, and uh, also, one of the things that I save a lot of time on when I'm out in the field is I, because I'm not just an appraiser in my office, I'm running the business. I've got a couple other appraisers and I'm running my office, so I've got emails coming in constantly wanting bids on jobs or questions about this or that. And when I get in my car after an inspection, I have like a little, I have a keyboard, <coughs> a, um, a wireless keyboard already in my car, and I dock my computer in my car, I grab my wireless keyboard, and I sit there for a minute, maybe tweak some things in the report before I send it off to my assistant, and I maybe respond to a few emails. But I don't, how many emails do you have waiting for you when you get back to the office? How much junk do you have to sift through just so you can now sit down and do some work? Well, when I get back to the office, I know exactly where where I where I was, or you know, when I get there, I've already answered the most important emails or deleted the ones that don't matter or whatever. Um, and also, what the, the mobile computer has another big advantage is when I go out to in the field, I know ahead of time, or sometimes I'm I'm texting with my assistant while I'm out there in the field, and I'll say, hey, what did the county records say the square footage on this property was? And Luke will text back and say. It was 1600 and I'll be out there drawing the property while I'm on the inspection. I'm like, oh man, we're, eight, we're coming in at 1800 <coughs> We're coming in at 1850 This is a problem. Uh-oh. So I'm checking to see that my sketch is right. And then he's pulling me new comps. And if I can't get a hold of him in the office, then I get back to my car and I'm checking through the comps we have and seeing if we need some different comps because now we're a little bigger or a little smaller. I've saved a whole other trip out to because usually what I do is, when I'm done with the inspection, now it's time to go drive comps. I don't want to have to make those two trips. And if I have to change my comps and get different properties, you know, I'm going to save a ton of time on those ones where they end up being different than what we thought going out. So, How do you dock your computer in the car? Um, well, I'll show you that here in just a minute. You'll see a little uh, video clip. Um, and so, one more thing that, that doesn't have to do with saving time with that mobile computer, but really I think it makes you look more professional. I can tell you when I go out to the property, I want to dress nice and look like I'm worth the really high fees I'm charging. Um, and also if I've got some mobile gadgets, and I also I think it just takes that next step. It looks like you are a profession. You, you know, I, I put, we put the company logo on our car, and I just try to take it up to the next, to the next step. So I look like I'm professional. I look like I'm worth those really high fees because I'm charging some very high fees, probably a lot higher than most people is what I hear from the people who call me. 
Uh, so, you know, you've got to look like you're worth it when you get out there to the property. And I think mobile device is just one other way to look like you're worth a lot of money. And uh, maybe that's true or not, or uh, anecdotal, but... Uh, um, so, uh, there, are, there are a ton of mobile devices to choose from, to use in the field. Uh, I know John uses, what do you use, iPad? Yeah. yeah, so there's an iPad. And, there's a Microsoft Surface, um, and then uh, the computer in the background that you see back there is the computer I got here. It's it's the computer that I use. So there's uh, there's what I call all-in-one desktop replacement tablets, and and that's what I use. It means it's one computer that you use everywhere. They're going to be a lot more expensive, but you know how much did you spend on that laptop or that? desktop computer that you use in your office, you probably spend a lot. And then how much do you spend on that tablet? Well, the all-in-one computer is is just that. You don't have to buy multiple computers and you don't have to maintain multiple computers. It's all in one. That's what I choose. But really the uh, the tablets and the smartphones like John John uses or or Jim that works for me uses an iPad. They work great. The cost is really low. You probably already have one that you play with while you're watching TV or something. Um, most of the software providers have apps that work quite well on them, and uh, you know I recommend it to somebody who already doesn't need to go out and buy a new computer right now. An iPad or or some similar device works pretty good. I don't think that the cell phones, the cell phone apps are very good. I've got one on my iPhone and I've tried it, and it's, it's pretty hard to sketch a property on a tiny little screen. <laughs> so. Um, Let's talk about desktop replacement tablets. So this is this is what I do. Um, you can see I grabbed my computer in the little video here. And now I'm out in the field writing on the screen. So I grab the computer, I can write on the screen, and I can take that right to my car and I dock it in my car and off I go. Um, that's what I use. It's running Windows. It's running the same exact everything that I run when I'm sitting at my desktop. So if I have something set up on my computer at home, that's exactly the way I see it when I'm in the field. The only difference is when I'm in the field, I'm using a pen on the screen or my finger rather than a mouse. Um, and I think I think it's a pretty convenient way to go if, if that's what you want to do and if you need to replace your home computer. Uh, a lot of people are afraid, they've heard a lot of war stories or things about Windows 8. And if you have a, a, a tablet computer, you don't necessarily need to have Win Windows 8. I, I was running Windows 7 on mine. Mine actually came with Windows 7 and I upgraded to see what all the fuss was about. And uh, <laughs> Windows 8, I actually think, is, is, a better, is a better operating system. But when you run it in the desktop function of Windows 8, um, it actually works exactly like Windows 7, the only difference being how you shut it down. But really everything else is almost exactly the same. Um, and if you, if you want to do an all-in-one type computer setup, uh, desktop <coughs> replacement, um, all has mode has an app that works with a, a Windows tablet. And I don't use the app, I actually use uh, just the full version of Total in my computer when I'm out in the field, and it, I think it works fantastic. I can have one window open with the sketch. I can click on the bottom of my screen. I can click between windows and click open, um, say, the, the form, and I can grab my quick list <coughs> and select what I want in the form as I'm filling it out, going through the property, and I think it works better than the app. The problem with the, the all the mode app for Windows or or that I even find when you use like an iPad or something, is that um, there are some formatting problems that I don't know if John or Jim can add to this, but I've had things that I put in one way in the app and then I open it up later in my software at home and it looks different. It's not exactly the same, but all of a sudden the room counts are, are wrong or something like that. So. <coughs> Uh, also, I decided, I, everyone always asks me how much, how much my computer costs. If you're going to do a desktop replacement, what's it cost? And uh, so I did a quick comparison. And I tell you, if I'm buying a desktop replacement computer today, I would go with the Surface Pro 3. Uh, they now, uh, uh, the motion that I use is not the R12, that's the new version of my computer. But 
uh, motion computers are, are commercial quality, and they're expensive, and they're rugged, and they, uh, they're designed to be used in the field. They can get wet. I've stood out in the pouring down rain with water running off my computer and <coughs> ripping. And, you know, I don't worry about it. It's designed for that. It's fine. Uh, the surface is not, but there's protective covers available and things. Uh, the, the motion computers all have some really great docking systems for at your desk or in your car, but the Surface now has a docking station that works for a desk, and you could, I think, adapt it for use in a car. And the Surface is half the money with the same processing power. You can see these computers are just as powerful as your computer you probably have at your desktop. i7 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig solid state hard drive, you think, oh, well, that's a pretty small hard drive. I've got a terabyte at home. Well, that terabyte at home is probably running on a spinning hard drive, and it's probably pretty slow compared to these 256 gig solid state. And this 256 gig solid state is probably all you need. Um, if, you need a, if you need a USB drive plugged into your computer at home, uh, that'll work, it'll work just fine. Uh, you know, the, the motion actually has a, adapter for, I can plug into the side on a motion, I can plug up an extra monitor like I've done here for this presentation on mine. Uh, the Surface doesn't have that, but the Surface does have USB 3 and it allows you to uh, put up to 128 devices. So if you have a USB hub, you can plug into a USB 3 port and go 128 devices off of that, which that's just as powerful as your home computer. Both of these computers will kind of get hot if they're used really heavily at the desk. Um, if you're working them hard, like I do, I make videos for my website and things, and I'm running, I'm running pretty hard, and um, they'll get hot, but they handle it just fine. And, and so, if I was going to replace my computer today, I'd go with the Surface Pro 3. And uh, don't be confused. My wife wanted to point out. Here's a here's a Surface right here. Or, no, that's a iPad. Here's a surface. You know, it just opens up. You got a keyboard, it pulls on and off. Obviously, you wouldn't use this computer when you're docked in a docking station back at the office. You would dock it and have external monitors and, and a keyboard that pulls out and a regular keyboard. But uh, uh, one thing my wife wanted me to point out is this is a surface RT. They're the cheap surface. Don't get that. That's just, this is. No more than a cell phone. You know, it's like an iPad. So, um, what I'm talking about is a Surface Pro, which actually runs full Windows, Windows RT. Yes, John. Gary, as, as far as you know, the backing station for the Surface, uh, you'd be able to use a, the USB dongle you talked about and have multiple monitors off of that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you could do up to six multiple monitors using the one USB drive that it has on there. The only problem with using a USB drive to run multiple monitors is that it takes processing power versus when you use a when you have a um, video card in your computer that actually has the port for for an extra monitor. If you're using the video card, it has its own some own memory and processing, and you're and it's running the video through that. When, when you use a when you use the USB port to run your extra monitors. Uh, you will slow your computer down a little bit. Now, I cannot tell when I'm using my computer with three extra monitors, I can't tell that they're running through the USB, but I'm not running games. You know, the, the secret there is you have to be very careful when you use multiple monitors, because my son just did this, is why I know. And there's a lot of uh, little devices out there to run multiple monitors. But if you want to do it the right way, this, this product Gary's talking about called the Pluggable, that has processing power in it also. So no, it, I wasn't aware of that. It, it doesn't take very much processing power off your computer, where a lot of them out there uh, take full power off the pro processing to run the monitor. And so the pluggable and that, and that version or that type work great, but if you use just the regular simple little cheap plug-in, you'll find out it slows everything down here. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, so moving along, when I'm out in the field, I'm, if you're not connected to the internet, you, why, why be mobile? So uh, when I'm out in the field, I use a little hotspot, put it in my pocket. When I'm out of the car, when I'm back in the car, I, or just leave it in my pocket. My, my computer and most tablets have an internal card 
The problem is, is that some places will charge you a lot to activate those cards unless you bought the computer. Like if you go to Verizon and say I want to buy an iPad, they'll sell you an iPad and activate the internal card for like $30 a month. But if you take your iPad down to the Verizon and, and have it activated, they'll bring you. To activate my card in this computer, they were going to charge me, I, I don't remember, it was like $75 a month, just something ridiculous. But I could buy the hotspot that had just as much data, and I could connect as many devices as I want, I don't know, like up to seven or something. And and they charge me uh, like uh, $50 a month, so. Can I ask you? Yeah? How much, how much gigabytes do you get with that? Um, I don't know how many gigs I get, I think it's four or five, but I'm not positive I could find out for you though. I just look it up on my account. Uh, so uh, now we're on to laser measuring devices. So how many people use a use a disto or something similar in the field? Wow, huh? probably but 75% of you. So I don't need to sell you on a, on a disto. I, I I think it's it's fantastic. Now I have to be honest. When I'm out in the field, I've got my disto in my pocket like this. My computer has a shoulder strap, and I've got my computer, but I've always got this in my hand because there are times when I just like to put a tape on it. But, but I think one of the things that people don't realize about a disto, the ones that don't use a disto, is that they think that they need something to bounce off when they measure. And yes, you do, but you don't have to have what, what your mind has to start to think a little bit differently. So when I'm measuring a house that has an outside corner, say I'm measuring across the garage. And you know, normally you'll have the outside of the garage will be like this, and it'll be a garage door, say there's a garage door here and another garage door here, and now you've got another corner going that way, and you want to measure. I don't measure, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna find anything on that corner to bounce off of, but if I bounce off the inside of that edge right there, just before the end of the garage, and then when I get to here, I can hit the plus button on my disto, put my hand or anything to get that extra and hit equal. Now I have the total distance quickly without having to have something to bounce off of. Also, a lot of times the house turns and there's maybe a fence just past that. So I could, I could hit the fence at the other end and then, then I just walk down to where I want to cut it off and I hit minus equal and I've got the same measurement that I just got going the other way. So there's almost always something to bounce off of. You just have to change the way you think. Change the way you think about using it. Because, uh, so there's also some features. I, most appraisers, when they talk about laser measuring, they talk about a disto, and I bet everybody uses a disto. Um, you can get the D2, I think is all you need. It's, I, I believe, the cheapest disco. It's only $160 on Amazon. There are less pri lower, lower price major laser measuring devices uh, for you know like 50 or under under $100. But the lasers are not really bright and don't work very good outdoors like appraisers need. Um, but I can tell you, this device has saved me so much time, not on the outside of a house, but in attics and basements and cutting off garages. I almost, I hear this all the time, I go into a house, I get to the front door and I say, yeah, I measured around the outside, I just need to get in your garage and, and measure the inside of the garage to cut it away from the square footage. And they're almost, I hear this every, almost every time, is, oh, there's a lot of stuff out there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to measure. And I say, don't worry, I've got a disto, and you know, I put it up by, and just go right over the top of the stuff and get my measurement. Don't forget to add in the six inches for the wall at the other end of the garage, and I'm, I'm done. And they always go, wow, oh, that's fantastic. I'm, and again, they think that I'm worth the fee that I'm charging. This, this disto is a D5. I got it on eBay for 100 bucks, but they're normally like 699. And it's got a point finder, which is pretty convenient if you want to spend a lot of money. Uh, the point finder, you you push this button, and it's got a it's got like a video screen, and I can zoom in on the video screen. So if I'm looking at something, um, you probably can't see it, but if I'm looking at something over on that wall, that plate, can you see it? 
I can see the plate and I can see exactly where my dot is, even if I can't see the dot on the plate. So it's a convenient little feature, but it's not worth the extra hundreds of dollars they charge for. Those, that's the only feature. A lot of, a lot of appraisers think they need the Bluetooth disto, and I really haven't met an appraiser who finds the Bluetooth to be a lot of help out in the field. One problem is when you get a measurement on the disto is that it gives you uh, a really accurate measurement. So, you know, when I, when I measure across the room, let's see what I get. It's, uh, this is 28 feet, 7 inches, and 1930 seconds. So that's way too accurate for my appraisal sketch. I'm going to have to click, if I was using Bluetooth, and sent that to my computer, I would then have to click on it and round it, because I, we only have ANSI standards is to the one-tenth of a foot, right? And uh, I know most appraisers aren't even that good on, on the measuring. So, you know, we're going to round that number a little bit. Um, and you'd have to click on your screen anyways and round it. So I, I, don't, I don't think you need to spend the money on a, on a Bluetooth. Just get the cheapest disco. But if you don't have one, gosh, get out there and get one. And, and use them both, you know, until you start to realize you don't really need the tape all that much. But, um, so. Did, did you say the disto, the D2, is the way to go? Yeah, I think so. Right. It's cheap. I think that's what Jim's using, right? Well, the D2, is that what you have? Yeah, mine, yeah, mine is basically that, that model, but it's older than that, so they didn't have the D thing. But I kind of like that. Uh, you know, the thing of it is, is that all laser deals, when it's bright outside, it's pretty tough to see what you're, and, it, and sometimes it's just darn near impossible. Sure. And uh, but the nice thing about the one Gary has, and I, I do think you could find it for a hundred bucks for sure, did it? That uh, uh, on his, you're actually looking at a video screen of what it's hitting. Even though you can't see the dot, you see, oh, there it is. Okay, click. Yeah, and a lot of times if, I the like sun, that idea. if the sun is really bright, you can't see that dot. And one alternative to um, one alternative to being able to see that dot is they have some glasses you can buy that are red, but I don't want to walk around looking like a freak on the spectrum of these red I glasses. I have those glasses. You do. But I didn't find them terribly helpful. But I'm, I'm pretty much blind anyway. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know if anybody would want to wear those things. You do look like you're looking for aliens. You need a tinfoil cap. Well, you, can also get, you can also get these little corner things that, you, that have stick them on them, and you can slap them on the corner. But, but that doesn't save you time if you have to walk to the other corner, slap the target on, and then walk back and shoot the measurement. But I can uh, I can tell you that I pull, I, I carry my tape, but there are so often there's bushes, and I can go under the bushes to hit the corner of a porch or go over, hold it up and go over the top of bushes where I would normally be getting all dirty going down the side or, or trying to reach up over the top of the bushes and my tape's getting stuck and I'm like, eh, come on, stop. And then it falls off the end of the house. I don't do any of that. I just grab the disto and shoot it and, and go. And if you're practiced with it, you get good, then um, you know, it's, not, it's not a big deal. But at first, it's like, like everything that I said, it's not gonna happen. Just, I'm gonna go out there the first time I use my disco, leave the tape in the car, and the first time I use my disco, it's gonna save me all this time. It's probably not. It's probably gonna take you longer. Uh, so, uh, to sum it up, uh, stop making excuses. I, I think, uh, let's move into the future. Um, you don't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go back to using a typewriter to do your appraisals or, or Polaroids and taping them onto each page. You wouldn't ever go back to that. Well, um, you know, I wouldn't go back to that either. Your time is way too valuable to waste without, without upgrading to all the stuff that we have available. And, you know, mobile devices are just a couple. Um, remember, that the biggest time savings is not on the inspection, it's when you get back to the office. These devices are going to pay for themselves when you get back to the office. Um, there's going to be a learning curve. Uh, it won't work if you don't try it. Uh, don't expect it to work the first time. And try my steps or, or find your own way. But whatever the case, I can't live without my mobile devices and I hope someday you can't either. So.
thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you, John, and thank you, Gary. That was just tremendous. And it is a very powerful tool, as Gary has, has mentioned. It makes you more professional. And also, when you leave that property, you can press a button, show them what their square footage is, and they're not going to give you any arguments. Unless they're a realtor. <laughs> well, a lot of, like, to add to what he just said, I mean, a lot of times people will ask me, you know, what's, what is the square footage? And if, depending on the type of assignment, I can share that information with them. And, I, you know, I, and they'll, yeah, they'll look at my sketch and they'll say, I, I'm absolutely 100% certain this is right because my sketch closed perfectly. I got all the way around the house and I know this is right. So if, and we'll talk about it sometimes. Well, I'll leave it open to um, Gary, and then uh, we'll see you next time. Yes. What kind of a docking setup do you have? Um, car. Oh, in the car? Yeah, that's what I. Um, yeah, it just looks. Car. It just looks just like um, just like my dock that you saw in the presentation at the desk, except uh, there's a stand in my car. Um, the arm, it's just an uh, adjustable car arm that I bought on Amazon. It was less than $100, and, uh, and it bolts to a seat bolt down at the base of my passenger seat bolt, and I can adjust the arm and move it all over, clamp it down tight. Don't you have a picture of it on the website of you sitting there at the dock? Yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, there is. It, it's car park there. Yeah. Really yeah, quite it's, cool. Yeah, it's out, it's out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's actually parked out front if you want to see it too. But um, it's got a lock. It's got a lock on it, a padlock where you it like clamps in and and locks. And I don't I don't ever leave my computer in the car. I take it with me. If I get out of the car for just to run into my post office box and check, I grab it because I don't want somebody to smash and grab. But you know, it does have a it does have a lock that might. It might stall someone long enough that you can get back to your car before you steal it. Uh, what about taking six just have a Oh, yeah, I probably should. I, I had planned to mention that. I What I do is I use my iPhone to take my pictures. It takes better pictures than my tablet. And also, my tablet does have a... My tablet has a camera on the back right there. Um, and most tablets do. But... My, I find my phone takes better pictures, but not just that. If I um, if I uh, pick up my, you know, I don't, I feel like I look a little silly, like hanging this out the side of the car, and taking a picture of my or uh, or walking around the house like that. Whereas my phone, I just pull it out, and take a picture. But here's where the magic happens that I didn't mention. But I did brush on Dropbox, the Dropbox app for iPhone and for most even Android, it automatically syncs up your any pictures that are on your phone to a folder on your desktop. So as soon as I take a picture on my phone, well, a minute or two later, so long as my phone and my computer are connected to the internet, that picture is right there on my desktop. And I can drag it and drop it into the report right then. Uh, now, the, now the mobile apps for like iPad, they'll actually, you can click on the spot in the report where you want the photo and, and and take the photo right there in your report and it's automatically there, but I don't know that I save any time on the photo. I just give the photos to my assistant and tell them to put them in. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. How do you know which photo belongs to which address by doing it that way? Uh, well, when I drive the comps, my assistant gives me a PDF printout of a map with all my comps on it. And then while I'm in the car, I, uh, when I'm going to start driving comps, I pull up that PDF map that he gave me, and I'm driving around. I pull up in front of a house, take a picture with my phone, and I will take, take out the pen on my screen, and I'll just write right on there, photo one, and then I'll make any notes that I see about the property. Oh, I see a barn back behind it, or it looks, they got new windows, and it looks, or it's on a busy road, and or some, I'll just make whatever notes I happen to see about the property, just handwrite it with the pen, 
right there on the, and then when I send him my work after the after I'm done with the inspection, I'll I'll Skype him a folder that has everything. But uh, he wouldn't even have. I mean, he could actually go into my Dropbox and grab those photos directly if he wanted to. But I usually just send them as a packet, so it's got all the work file back to him, and he can then while I'm still out driving comps or doing anything, he's already working on the report. And, um, has you know he can have a lot of it done while I'm still out in the field. He could be calling agent. What are the two pieces of paper you print? Um, oh, that's a good question. I, I had mentioned I had wanted to talk about that. What I print are the engagement agreement that I get either my own engagement agreement if it's non lender or or the engagement agreement that I've sent because it usually has the name of the it usually has my contacts and and the names and the address and everything. So if something happens to my computer, I can pick up the phone and call that person if I need to and tell them. Or and I've got also I uh, so I print that one sheet and I usually also print the, either the tax page for the property or the RMLS printout if if it is a property that was recently listed. And the reason I do that is because I I. Uh, I make the phone call to set up an appointment, and a lot of times I don't get a hold of somebody or whatever, and I've got that paperwork sitting off to the side. So now they call me at an inopportune time, I'm eating dinner or whatever, uh-oh, I run to my office and my paper's sitting there. I don't have to find it on my computer, it's just sitting there on the table <coughs> with all my other in-process orders, and I can make notes, oh, okay, yeah. And I can also look at the arm and oh, it says you bought this back about two years ago, you know, what have you changed since then? Have you had any additions or replaced any major items? And I can start asking the questions and I make notes right on there and I don't have to, if something, if my computer shut off or if I, you know, for whatever reason, I've always got that. And by the time I'm done with the whole process, I don't need those two sheets anymore, I can recycle them. Um, but they're just, you know, I'll make a note, hey, I called on, on you know, seven, nine, I made a phone call, and left a message and I called the other number and there's just no answer. And then I'll you know I'll make those kind of notes on those two pieces of paper. But that and also if I'm out if I get to the property and I've got those two sheets of paper thrown on the seat in the car with me and my computer is not working, I flip them upside down, grab the clipboard out of the trunk and I start my inspection. <laughs> you know, you gotta have you gotta have contingency plans and um, go back old fashioned every once in a while we have to <laughs> Any other questions? You know, just a, just a point, if you try something like this, I found that uh, I always have two ways of doing everything. If you, if you have a laser measure, that's great, but also have a tape. And I actually have a backup tape just in case it yeah. breaks. Same thing, if you got a computer, have paper. I've got batteries have. in my car. And then also, um, you know, this is one thing that's really cool about Ocean computers. <coughs> they are expensive, but they do have some cool features. And this computer is running. Swap out batteries. Still running. I can change batteries on the fly. My docking stations have a little battery charger on them. I just stick that in the docking station. And you know, so they do have <coughs> motion computers. They everything they build. It's like it's built for people to work out in the field all day long. And the computer. I mean, I've had, like I said, pouring down rain and gotten it dirty. These things have the only spot they have like a little vent on the side, and there's a fan with a heat sink, but that's sealed off from the rest of the computer. So is it really heavy? How much does it weigh? Welcome to hold it. It's it's heavier than an iPad. The new one that they have that replaces this has just as much power. It's the same as an iPad. But this is this is heavy. And you can find these older motion computers on eBay for pretty cheap. People uh, sell them brand new. Uh, I use a I use a shoulder strap on it. The newer one, the newer ones are a little lighter. Is that what I mean? Yeah, the, the newer ones. <coughs> Shoulder straps on the right. Yeah, there we go. So 
Uh, Motion also has all of their docking, all of their docking stations are designed with the shoulder strap in mind. Uh, the only problem is it, it messes up for the, when I plug in the monitor adapter. Here, I had to take this off. But I never take the shoulder strap off. When I come back to the office, this gets docked in my docking station at home and the strap just kind of flops behind the docking station. When I'm in the car, it gets docked in the strap and I can just put that on my shoulder, spin it around and my hands are free to do whatever, which they don't, they have cases available for iPads and stuff to do that, but, um, but then you have to take it out of the case to do other things with it, you dock it. Which, so Motion has, but is that worth double the price? I don't think so. Do they have a showroom or is it strictly online? That's another problem with you know, <coughs> these industrial computers. They're made, they're custom built when you order them by motion. Uh, it takes time to get them and uh, there's only a few places in the country that sell them. But there's also not just motion. If you're looking for a rugged industrial quality computer uh, and don't want to do something like the Surface, uh, there's lots of them. Panasonic, Toughbook, there's these ones that, that's the one that police officers use a lot. Motion is really big into the hospitals and doctor use, and UPS uses Motion as well. Um, are you filling out straight on to the 10 or Yeah, I just use my quick list. I use the pen, hit a drop down, grab Because I know uh, Total makes the mobile version. Right. So there's stuff that runs on Windows. Yeah, and I don't like it. I don't like it as much. Um, uh, it just it just doesn't. Like I said, I tried it, and uh, I had problems sometimes when I would switch that file back into a total file. Some things would be different. Like the software tries to tell me the room count on its own. It wants to tell me the room count and fill that. But you know, it wants to call a laundry room a room or something, and, and I don't want to call it a room. Um, and that and that may be a setting issue, but there was little things that like that, where I would do something in the mobile app, and then I get back to the regular software, and I'd go, "Gosh, that's not how I had it. This is, you know." And it, it scared me as far as, and, and I realized I was just as fast as with the regular program. The sketching program in total works with the pen, and it works just as good as you know the mobile sketches. You just draw the line on the screen. If it's not the length you want, you click the line and the little pop-up box comes on you can tell it how long it's Any other questions? Okay, well let's give Gary one more hand.